One of the oldest examples of tempering steel is a pickaxe that was actually found in the region of Galilee by an archaeologist dating back to somewhere around 1200 or 1100 BC. And tempering steel is the lost art of the blacksmith where the blacksmith will heat the metal up to high temperatures and then cool it down, making it more elastic and stronger in the process. That the blacksmith will heat the metal up, shaping it on the anvil and then cool it down, repeating that process over and over again, locking in the added strength. Todd Balsingler met a pastor in West Virginia who used to work as a miner. And he says that during his days as a miner, every evening when they finished a long day's work, before going home, they had to temper their axe. That they had to heat it up, sharpen the end of it, and cool it down. And they had to repeat that process over and over again until a blue line would emerge on the metal. And then they knew that the pickaxe was ready and strong enough for the next day's work. And throughout our lives, there are those experiences that temper and shape us. And many of them are quite difficult. Even experiences that if it was left up to us, we would avoid. And if we took a before and after picture of the disciples, before they were called to follow Jesus and after they had all those experiences with them, we might see a difference in them. Not a physical difference, but perhaps there was more compassion and patience. Maybe they listened more and reacted less. Perhaps there was a wider circle in their lives and they had more endurance for what was hard. That they had been tempered and shaped by the words and actions of Jesus, many of them quite challenging. Like those words where Jesus calls the disciples to the work of the harvest, where he says, go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The only problem is, that's not what I heard growing up. That when we sat in Sunday school classes or in the sanctuary for worship, and we talked about how the harvest was great and the laborers were few, it was a calling to go to the ends of the earth, which is what we hear by the end of the gospel of Matthew. That apparently the disciples were on this journey that what Jesus said to them at the beginning is not what Jesus said to them at the end, that they were tempered and changed throughout the journey. Like when Jesus met the Canaanite woman, a Gentile, someone not part of the house of Israel. And when Jesus saw her faith, the calling of the harvest was widened well beyond the house of Israel. And this kind of change is described in the letter to the Romans by saying, suffering 
produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character leads to hope, and it is a hope that does not disappoint. But to be absolutely clear, this is not a suffering orchestrated by God. It is simply an admission that life is not always easy. That as much as we would like to, we cannot avoid suffering. But in the wake of it, we can seek out this endurance that leads to character and ultimately to hope. And it is a hope which does not disappoint. And strangely enough, we end up discovering that the tragic is found in the same place as the normal. As Brian Doyle writes, everyone thinks that awful comes by itself, but it doesn't. It comes hand in hand with the norm. About a month before Catherine and I were married 20 years ago, right after we graduated, I was busy with ordinary things on a normal afternoon when my phone rang and it was my aunt and my aunt had never called me before and in the most calm voice that she could muster she said your mother's been in a car accident and you probably need to come home. It was the longest drive from North Carolina to Augusta, Georgia that day. And when I got to the hospital full of all of these people from church in my life, I discovered that she had been running errands that afternoon, one of which was picking up a salad plate for us (laughs) that was a wedding gift. And as she was driving home on a route that she had driven a hundred times before, she was taking a left turn across two lanes of traffic when a fully loaded dump truck ran a red light and hit her in the driver's side door. She was rushed to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. It was touch and go for several days. And she spent multiple weeks in the hospital with critical injuries. And somehow that salad plate was not damaged in the wreck. And for reasons I cannot explain, I kept that plate separate from the others in its box for years. Perhaps because we are so startled by the fact that the tragic can find us in the midst of the ordinary. And as much as we might try to prevent those moments that we will never forget, but we want to, we want to forget, we cannot avoid them. That life is fragile. And those moments can break us. 
those moments do break us. But as Hemingway wrote, the world breaks everyone. And afterwards, many are strong at the broken places. That this hope that Paul outlines is what Joni Sanker describes as humble hope. It is humble because it has life's experiences behind it. It is a one day at a time, one step at a time kind of hope, but it is a hope which does not disappoint. It is incremental grace, but it is the grace of God. If you have ever stood in front of a redwood tree, looking up so high that your neck hurts, you might have felt that sense of awe and reverence that you cannot get over how big it is. A redwood can grow as tall as 367 feet high and 22 feet wide. It is as tall as a 35-story skyscraper. And they live on average 600 years. Some have lived as long as 2,000 years. And not because the conditions are always perfect and ideal. Because they are so big, hundreds of gallons of water run through their trunk every day. So groundwater is essential. But many times, there's not enough rain. So they also depend on fog, that at Mere Woods in California, that grove of redwoods receives 40% of their water from fog, that the fog rolls in from the ocean and the redwood needles are designed to capture it and hold it in place so that the moisture will drip down into the groundwater but you cannot see it happen in real time. And the effect is always delayed, that you can't measure it until much later. And so many of our experiences over time and throughout our lives, particularly the hardest ones, shape us and temper us over time. But like tempering steel, we can become stronger at the broken places. It just takes time and help from others that it is a humble hope, an incremental grace that we find in the rhythms of the church and our faith, in the gift of authentic community, and in the abiding presence of the steadfast love of God. Amen.